GSLV. It is geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle. So it is an it is an advanced launch vehicle developed by Indian Space Research Organization. So it is used for deploying satellites into geosynchronous transfer orbit and also geostationary orbit. So basically, the satellites that will be placed in this orbit are communication satellites. Right. Good morning students, welcome back to Pluto Science. Right, today is our 33rd day. Till now we have completed 32 topics. So previously two days we have seen satellites and we have also have seen missiles, missiles and missile systems. Right. right. Two. So now to launch the miss uh, to launch the satellites we need launch vehicles right so uh, the launch vehicles also very very important when we study about the space exploration for that matter the defense so uh, basically when we were studying the uh, we can say missiles so basically to launch the ballistic missile ballistic missiles also the same rocket technology i mean similar rocket te technology that is used to launch the uh, satellites that will be used to launch the ballistic missiles for example the agni missiles so uh, we can say the technology is similar in these two components right we have understood the missiles and uh, satellites now we will understand the launch vehicles to launch especially to launch the uh, we can say satellites right so satellites are they are specialized vehicles or specialized vehicle uh, air uh, a spacecraft designed to carry payload such as uh, satellites or space probes so when we talk about missiles the payload will be we can say the nuclear bomb or atomic bomb or on any other we can say conventional uh, exploding material so that will be the difference so in uh, we can say space programs in satellites the payload will be the satellite right 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 so basically the primary purpose of these uh, two uh, the primary purpose of this launch vehicles is to uh, uh, pay i mean is to transport these payloads i mean the satellites to desire to their desired orbits around the earth or beyond so yesterday we i mean few days before we have also understood the orbits uh, in orbits which the satellites uh, i mean revolve around the uh, uh, earth so the responsibility uh, responsibility of the launch vehicles is to uh, put these satellites into that we can say orbit right Tra into that trajectory all right if you see the historical background of the launch vehicles so evolution of uh, satellite launch vehicle in uh, vehicles in india if you see right so basically isro has been uh, started it has been uh, i mean isro has been started during the 1916 ever since its inception it is uh, at the forefront of building as uh, building satellites as well as developing the launch vehicles also launch vehicles also so it is uh, not only important to have satellites but also to have the launch capability so similarly if we see the present scenario many countries have the capability of building satellites so many countries have this capability however only few countries have the capability of launching them launching the satellite so it is good that from the beginning uh, immediately after the independence we not only focused on building satellites but also we have uh, i mean focused on developing these launch developing these launch vehicles to launch the satellites right so in the 1970s isro uh, initiated the satellite launch vehicle program aiming to develop uh, indigenous launch vehicle capable of placing satellites into low earth orbit right so the first successful launch of india's satellite aryabhatta 
uh the satellite uh, satellite is built by indian satellite by uh, was built by the isro but the rocket or the launch vehicle used is the soviet rocket uh, i mean this particular aryabhatta satellite it is launched in 2017 so however we have used or dependent on russia and the russian made we can say launch vehicle right however uh in 1980 uh, we are able to use our own launch vehicle that is sla satellite launch vehicle so we could successfully launch this rohini satellite on our indigenously built uh, satellite launch vehicle right so this in, uh, we can say this is a landmark in developing the satellite launch vehicles after that we have developed augmented satellite launch vehicles right <coughs> building on the success of the satellite launch vehicle 3 we have developed augmented satellite launch vehicle which had higher payload capacity and the enhanced performance right so the aslv it has made its a made in flight in 1987 and conducted four launches contributing to the development of india's launch vehicle capability so then came the most important aspect i mean very reliable reliable launch vehicle when it comes to india the pslv polar satellite launch vehicle right so it is inducted into indian we can say launch vehicle program in 1990s it is emerged as the workhorse of launch vehicle we can say it is the workhorse of launch vehicles in india right so it is it has the capability of placing satellites into polar and geosynchronous orbits so yesterday we have i mean two days before we have understood what are the orbits different types of orbits so this particular <coughs> polar satellite launch vehicle it has the capability of placing satellites into polar orbit and even into geosynchronous orbits right right so its inaugural flight in 1993 it marked a significant advancement right after that we have developed we can say it is the recent development we can say so gslv program we have started right geosynchronous satellites launch uh, launch vehicle we are uh, we have developed so it is uh, developed a launch vehicle capable of carrying heavier payloads into geosynchronous transfer orbit or for that matter geostationary orbit also geostationary orbits also right so gslv mark 1 it uh, made its debut uh, flight in 2001 followed by gslv mark 2 and uh, gslv mark 3 uh, mark 3 also we have developed so now we are using G- uh, gslv mark 3 for prestigious uh, we can say uh, programs so recently uh, we can we can say recent program of chandrayaan 3 chandrayaan 3 so to uh, launch this we have used gslv mark okay right so this is the we can say chronological order order of development of uh, we can say satellite launch vehicles right now we will understand the types of launch vehicle so we can say it is uh, we can say closer to the orbits four types of orbits we have seen low earth orbit medium earth orbit or intermediate earth orbit or similarly geosynchronous or uh, geosynchronous or geostationary orbit and a special orbit some special orbits will be there so the vehicles also particular type of vehicle will be there to Uh, we can say insert a particular satellite into that particular orbit right now we will see the classification of launch vehicles based on payload capacity and the mission objectives so small satellite launch vehicles they are uh, designed to launch small payloads typically weighing up to a few hundred kilograms and uh, so the examples of the examples are cube sats and uh, nano sats similarly the edu sats also so the uh, through the small launch uh, small satellite launch vehicles we basically launch these kinds of satellites right the small variants uh, the examples are one of the pslv's variant pslv ql uh, variant it is uh, comes under the small category of small satellite launch vehicles right 
similarly medium lift launch vehicles so these are capable of uh, launching payloads ranging from several hundred kilograms to several metric tons into orbit right so basically example is gslv mark 3 uh, also we can say pslv also one of the examples similarly heavy lift launch vehicles they are uh, designed to carry payloads weighing several metric tons to or more into orbit inclu including large communication satellites space telescopes and inter in, uh, interplanetary we can say probes right basically the examples we can say gslv mark 3 uh, some of the international examples are falcon heavy and the delta 4 heavy right similarly another type of we can say launch vehicles are human rated launch vehicles so in these vehicles basically humans the payload comprises of humans also so best example is the our ambitious program gaganyan gaganyan so uh, this uh, i mean whatever the launch vehicle we are going to use so that will be a that will be a human rated launch vehicle so basically this vehicle should be in a position to put the we can say crew module so there will be three modules we have seen so whatever wherever the crew are saying it it will be in a position to put this crew module into the desired orbit right similarly interplanetary launch vehicles so these are specialized vehicles capable of launching sp spacecraft on mission missions beyond earth's orbit including missions to other planets moons and the deep space exploration so basically the chandrayaan and the mangalyaan whatever we have taken so these also whatever the vehicles we have used they will come under interplanetary launch vehicles so one of the important uh, two important we can say launch ve vehicles presently used in india are pslv polar satellite launch vehicle and uh, other one is gslv uh, we have conducted few we can say launches through using gslv and we can say it is the latest technology uh, i mean we are able to consolidate on this however pslv has proved its worth and uh, we, are, we, are, we call it as the workhorse of history workhorse of history right so purpose and design if you see the polar satellite launch vehicle it is a versatile and a reliable a reliable launch vehicle developed by indian space research organization so basically uh, the primary purpose uh, purpose of this is to deploy satellites into polar and sun synchronous orbits so yesterday we have seen uh, the polar and sun synchronous the satellites that are put to uh, we can say polar or sun synchronous orbits are we can say earth observation satellites earth observation satellites are remote sensing satellites all right so basically this uh, pslv is used to deploy satellites for this purpose so basically these satellites will be put in polar or sun synchronous orbits as well as other specialized orbits to meet wide range of mission objectives right so it is a four stage launch vehicle uh, consisting of solid liquid propulsion stages alternatively means so it is a four stage uh, we can say launch vehicle here first stage will be solid next stage will be liquid next again another stage will be solid fuel i mean these are fuel stages so solid fuel liquid fuel again solid fuel and again liquid fuel so sometimes according to the need there will be strap and boosters will be there strap and boosters if you see the image of pslv you will come to know so boosters will be there to increase the capability so basically these uh, boosters are they will contain the solid fuel they will also boosters will also contain the solid fuel so according to the need the boosters will be changed they range from two to six right right so if you see what are the types of satellites that can be launched through pslv are so we can uh, we can launch wide variety of wide range of satellite payloads including remote sensing satellites earth observation satellites even navigational satellites and uh, scientific payloads also such as uh, nanosat edusat etc and uh, intercontinental uh, 
కస్టమర్స్ సారీ ఇంటర్నేషనల్ కస్టమర్ శాటిలైట్స్ ఆల్సో సో ఇస్రో ఐ మీన్ ఇస్రో ఈజ్ యూజింగ్ పిఎస్ఎల్వి టు లాంచ్ ది శాటిలైట్స్ ఆఫ్ అదర్ కంట్రీస్ ఆల్సో సో ఇన్ దిస్ వే ఇస్రో ఈజ్ ఎర్నింగ్ సమ్ రెవెన్యూ ఆల్సో సో బేసికలీ ఇట్ ఈస్ యూజ్ టు బేసికలీ ఇట్ ఈస్ యూజ్ టు లాంచ్ ఎర్త్ అబ్జర్వేషన్ అండ్ రిమోట్ సెన్సింగ్ శాటిలైట్స్ అండ్ ఆల్సో నావిగేషనల్ శాటిలైట్స్ రైట్ సో ద రేంజ్ ఆల్సో Uh, I mean, when we see the sizes and weights, the range varies uh, uh, to a large extent. So, including CubeSats, I mean, very small uh, s- small satellites, nano satellites to the larger communication satellites and scientific payloads. So, the payload range is also varies a lot, right? So, the PS, uh, PSLV is capable of deploying satellites into different orbits, including polar orbit, sun synchronous orbit, and uh, geo tra- uh, geo stationary transfer orbits catering to diverse mission requirements right we have understood what are these orbits and what are the uses of these particular orbits right here you can see this is pslb workhorse of isro so here the we can see strap and boosters so according to the need this uh, number of number and size of the strap and boosters will be changing right so basically this is the isro no sorry pslv uh, rocket or launch vehicle you can see. right next is gslv it is geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle so it is an it is an advanced launch vehicle developed by indian space research organization so it is used for deploying satellites into geosynchronous transfer orbit and also geostationary orbit so basically the satellites that will be placed in this orbit are communication satellites right so they will be very heavy they will be very heavy right so it i mean the gslv is a we can say powerful rocket right so it consists of three main stages remember this difference also pslv has four stages whereas gslv has only three stages and the third stage is very very important here so first stage is uh, solid rocket boosters s200 that system is called as s200 liquid fueled core stage it is called as level uh, l100 and a cryogenic upper stage so this is very very important cryogenic stage is the major feature in the gslv uh, we can say launch way so this stage is known as c 25 so there is a special i mean it for every stage there will be a machine or engine to burn whatever the fuel that is there so we will later in this lecture we will also understand about the engines also the engines also basically <coughs> uh, the most important engine is scramjet engine we will understand about that also so these are these three stages that are present in the gslv launch vehicle right so the use of a cryogenic upper stage or the third stage it distinguishes it uh, gslv from the other launch vehicles especially pslv right so this cryogenic stage enhances the performance of gslv a lot right so through this capability only because of the uh, p- very powerful cryogenic stage it could reach the geostationary orbits right so capability to launch heavy payloads so gslv is capable of launching heavier payloads compared to other india indian launch vehicle especially pslv right with a typical payload capacity up to 5000 kilograms into geosynchronous or geostationary transfer orbit right so this uh, cryogenic upper stage or stage 3 it provides super uh, superior performance uh, in terms of specific impulse and the payload capacity enabling gslv to carry larger and heavier satellites into geostationary orbit right so what is cryogenic stage A cryogenic stage it involves cryogenic propellants so specially liquid hydro- hydrogen <coughs> liquid hydrogen lh2 and liquid oxygen lox as a fuel and a oxidizer so basically liquid hydrogen is the fuel and the liquid oxygen is the oxidizer i mean to burn the hydrogen we need oxygen right so in the, this these are the respective fuels in the rocket engine 
right as you all know both oxy- oxygen and hydrogen are gaseous they are gaseous so to store them in liquid form we need temperatures temperatures at very low levels very low levels right so it needs lot of uh, we can say complex equipment and it needs needs lot of technology so whenever if fuel is stored at very low temperatures very low temperatures it is known as cryogenic technology cr vivo cryogenic technology right so these engines the cryogenic engines they operate burning cryogenic propellants they are liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen uh, at the temperatures typically below minus 15 uh, minus 150 degree centigrade right so it is if we see in foreign heats it is minus 238 foreign heat to produce high thrust and efficiency for space launch vehicles so right so this is uh, about the cryogenic we can say cryogenic stage or cryogenic uh, engine that is used in uh, we can say in the gslv launch vehicles so we will know some more information about the cryogenic engine whatever the engine that is used to burn these fuels liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen right so here in the image you can see gslv <coughs> so this particular rocket is gslv mark 3 right now we will see the comparison between the pslv pslv and gslv right so this is the some of the information about the individual rockets you can go through this information right now we will see the differences between pslv and gslv so purpose it is designed primarily for launching uh, satellites into geosynchronous transfer orbit or geostationary orbit so right here uh, this object aim and purpose of this vehicle pslv is to launch vehicles into polar and sun synchronous orbits and other orbits such as special orbits right payload capacity here it can take payload, payload up to 5000 kg so the payload capacity it is up to 1750 kg into sun synchronous orbit so here you can see the difference in payload capacity also launch capability so gslv mark 2 and gslv mark 3 they have been deployed with the mark 3 having higher payload capacity and indigenous cryogenic upper stage so it is known for reliability with the numerous successful missions and the proven track record so because of this reason also uh, this reason only it can it it is being called as workhorse of the isro workhorse of the isro right similarly we can say it is also much cheaper right next is orbital range so optimized it is optimized for geostationary orbits so it is capable of deploying when we see orbit polar orbit sun synchronous orbit and also sometimes it is used for geo synchronous orbit also right reliability so it is uh, it has experienced uh, experienced some developmental problems especially with the cryogenic upper stage but now the i mean the programs are much more successful we can say we are gradually achieving reliability reliability if we see Uh, when it comes to gl uh, gslv we are gradually achieving reliability however pslv has proven its track t- uh, track record and it is much more real, reliable than gslv cost effectiveness so gslv missions are comparatively more costly due to higher complexity of the vehicle and especially due to the cryogenic stage so it is uh, comparatively less costly pslv is less costlier right so versatility if you see it has gslv has a lesser versatility pslv's versatility is in launching various types of satellites it has various i mean wider versatility including uh, choice of wide range of missions including remote sensing navigation and scientific research so versatility is also more for uh, pslv when we compare to gslv launch vehicle right these are some of the differences about uh these two types of launch vehicle 
right another important area that you should know should be knowing about is reusable reusable the launch vehicles so till now whatever the launch vehicles use are they are using kind of fire and forget fire and forget launch vehicles i mean once they are used and fired so uh, that uh, lifetime of that vehicle is gone so we cannot uh, reuse it again so however isro is uh, trying to develop reusable vehicles i mean once uh, the vehicles uh, vehicle Uh, puts the particular we can say payload into the orbit so the vehicle will again come back and it will soft land or it will land on the earth safely so that that particular vehicle can be reused again so basically spacex uh, spacex so it is ha- it has working uh, relentlessly on the we can say reusable technology so isro has also taken up this concept and it is trying to develop a reusable we can say reusable launch vehicle and uh, yesterday itself there is, i mean the mission has been we can say uh, pushback but particular vehicle i mean reusable launch vehicle launched by india yesterday only so it could successfully successfully uh, we can say soft landed on the earth and uh, the vehicle has been recovered so there is we can say some success in launching uh, in the i mean on the work of the real reusable launch vehicle so if we see the details right so <coughs> so the aim of this project reusable launch vehicle project or program is to develop technologies for creating cost effective reusable launch vehicle system which could potentially reduce the cost of access to space and increase frequency uh-huh. of launches so there will be a no need of building a separate rocket for each and every launch so whatever the vehicle you are uh, we are using so mo- majority of the components uh, in that vehicle they can be u- reused and uh, we can say the assembly of the satellite uh, also becomes very easier i mean we can quickly assemble the satellite onto a reusable vehicle and we can uh, launch the we can say we can uh, do the launches more frequently right so key components and the designs if we see winged reusable launch vehicle will be there so it will have wings like a flight and that particular vehicle will be there and advanced material technologies will be used uh, in that because they should be in a position to enter the re-enter the atmosphere so whenever a particular vehicle space vehicle it re-enters the atmosphere it will face lot of friction so due to generation of friction there is this a chance that they are being burned so to face this overcome um, i mean to overcome this uh, we can say adversity uh, advanced materials and te- technologies are required and also there is a need for a breathing propulsion systems so the propulsion systems we have seen the stages four stages in india uh, sorry in pslv and three stages in gslv so basically it is called as propulsion system so uh, air breathing propulsion system means so to uh, oxygen that is required to burn the fuels that is, that are placed here in the stages so oxygen has to be taken from the atmosphere so that is then that is known as air breathing propulsion system so basically the oxygen is uh, taken from the atmosphere the oxygen is not stored in the uh, air i mean launch vehicle itself so that is known as air breathing propulsion system so this reusable launch vehicle should be having this capability air breathing uh, capability right so these are some of the technologies and the components involved in uh, reusable launch vehicles so pushback just now we have seen yesterday this program has been successful so it is also nicknamed as swadeshi space shuttle it is the india's first reuse, reusable launch vehicle being developed by isro so it is designed to be single stage to orbit vehicle single stage to orbit vehicle meaning it aims to reach orbit without needing to jettison parts during the jettison parts during the launch so it will not uh, remove any parts while it is uh, when going into the orbit in the normal uh, rockets or launch vehicle we can see so here fuel will be stored 
so once uh, this stage is completed this table will be this stage will be disconnected from the rocket and it will be basically made to drop in the ocean water safely so when second stage is completed this stage will also will be get get attached from the we can say launch vehicle and it will also drop on the ocean water so problem is we could not use these parts again so here in the reusable launch vehicle there is no such kind of uh, we can say jettisoning of the parts of the launch vehicle everything will come back uh, again onto the earth right so this uh, reusable uh, reusability aspect is key to bring, bringing down the cost of the space access right so right so march 22 it is only yesterday pushpak was successfully completed its third test flight landing precisely on a runway after being released from the uh, from a helicopter at a high altitude right so this mission is a major milestone in demonstrating its autonomous landing capabilities under uh, complex conditions so here in the image you can see the pushpak which is a, a reusable launch vehicle Right. Next uh, important aspect, cryogenic stage we have seen in uh, GSLV, we can say GSLV. So there the engine that is used to burn the cryogenic stage is known as cryogenic engine. So the stage we have seen it is C25, however the engine used is that is known as CE7.5, right. So, uh, I mean, uh, the propellants or the fuel, we have understood a liquid, a liquid hydrogen and a liquid oxygen are the fuels. So, C7, uh, C, uh, CE 7.5, it is the cryogenic engine. It is a indigenous cryogenic upper stage engine. It is designed to provide a necessary thrust to propel the GSLV's upper stage called C25, right. So, if we see the key components or key aspects of cryogenic engine technology, uh, the fuel will be liquid, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Thrust generation, so lot of thrust will be generated so that the rocket or the payload will be propelled into the geostationary orbit. Right. High specific impulse will be provided by this engine. So, basically this will have high specific impulse. Right. <coughs> for rocket engines so that the payload will be placed into the geostationary orbit right here complexity and challenges uh, i have already explained it is a very complex technology because the fuels have to be stored approximately around the 150 degree centigrade so that they are stored in the liquid form so if a brief change in temperature may result in leaking of these fuels leaking of these fuels and we have to abort uh, about the entire we can say launching program so how, because of this reason this uh, we can say technology becomes very very important applications we have seen so through the cryogenic technology we can launch satellites into geo uh, geostationary orbit or geo uh, we, can, we can say geosynchronous orbit or geo stationary orbit uh, or for that matter geostationary transfer orbit so we can place the satellites in these orbits right so scramjet engine so this is also very very important so <coughs> so it is short for supersonic combustion ramjet it is a type of air breathing jet engine specially designed to operate efficiently at hypersonic speeds typically above the speed of Mach 5 so Mach is the five, uh, Mach is the sound of the sorry speed of the sound right so scramjet engine is so I have explained so uh, the oxygen in super uh, supersonic at supersonic uh, sonic speed to increase the lift capability the oxygen that is required to burn the fuel it has to be grasped from the atmosphere so this scramjet engine has the capability of absorbing the oxygen from the atmosphere so, uh, to burn the fuel that is placed in the aircraft right so it works work condition we can understand from below so air intake so at hypersonic uh, hypersonic speeds the incoming air is compressed by the shock waves generated by the vehicle's shape 
the scramjet engine features an inlet designed to slow down and compress this supersonic air flow before it enters into the combustion chamber right later combustion check uh, takes place once inside combustion chamber the chamber uh, the compressed air is mixed with fuel typically hydrogen and ignited right so unlike the conventional engines which rely on low speed air flow and the rotating turbine blades scramjet uh, scramjet engines ignite the fuel air mixer in a continuous supersonic flow without the need for mechanical compression right so these are the some of the stages involved <coughs> in scramjet engine earlier we used to <coughs> use a ramjet engine so we have updated the ramjet engine and we have created supersonic combustion ramjet engine that is basically known as scramjet engine right so this is some of the some information which thought uh, important from the point of uh, view of examination uh, from the launch vehicles topics right now we will see <coughs> a question <coughs> which is asked from this topic the question is asked in 2018 right the question is with reference to india's satellite launch vehicles consider the following statements right statement one is PSLV launch uh, PSLVs launch the satellites useful for earth resources monitoring uh, whereas GSLVs are designed mainly to launch communication satellites yes we have understood this this is a correct statement PSLV launches earth resources monitoring satellites and the GSLV launches designated designated to launch communication satellites next statement satellites launched by PSLV appear to remain permanently fixed in the same position in the sky as viewed, viewed from a particular location on the earth so this is a wrong statement so basically the uh, uh, satellites placed in geostationary orbit they look like they are fixed in a uh, in a particular place when we see them from the surface of the earth so basically the geosynchronous or geostationary uh, satellites are launched by GSLV not PSLV so this statement is a incorrect statement third statement is GSLV mark 3 is a four staged launch vehicle so uh, it is also wrong statement so it is a three staged launch vehicle with the first and the third stages using solid rocket motors and the second and the fourth stages using liquid engines so basically this is also incorrect statement so PSLV using PSLV is using four stages first and the three are solid second and the four are liquid so GSLV it is using a three staged we can say uh, um, propulsion system first stage uh, is uh, solid second stage is liquid and the third stage is cryogenic cryogenic right so here statement 2 and 3 are incorrect so correct option is option A only statement 1 is correct right so this is all for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you next time until then have a good day